Hello and welcome to the lecture for the Persuasive Presentation Assignment Guide. As with all these assignment guide lectures, I highly encourage you to go ahead and go on Blackboard and check out the full written assignment guide. Uh, with that said, let's go ahead and dive in here and get started. So in the next few minutes, I'm going to lay out what you need to know to be successful in your final presentation inside this class. So the persuasive presentation. The way that the persuasive presentation works is that you and your group members will choose a controversial current problem that exists right now in the status quo, and you will need to get approval on that topic from me. So when you think you have a topic, go ahead and email me and I'll let you know what I think. Uh, this topic has to be a controversial issue, could be a local issue, and you need to make sure that you're choosing something that people in this class, or at least some of them, are opposed to doing, because you need to actually engage in some persuasion inside this. Uh, during the presentation, you all will analyze the problem, discuss its implications, propose some solutions, and deal with uh, some naysayers inside that, and ultimately come up with a way that you could actually implement some ch change and solvency to that problem. All right, let's go ahead and talk about the content. Content is huge inside this one because not only are you providing references that are of high quality nature, you are making and supporting arguments. So you should have a series of claims. You, uh, connected to evidence that are all bind together with good logic inside here and are uh, um, void of any potential fallacies inside there. Um, so make sure that you're doing that. Kind of aim to follow that one source per minute guideline that we've set in previous presentations if you want to be successful. So at the very minimum, you need to have at least eight high quality sources to pass, but you should be aiming for more in the range of 20 high quality sources if you want to get a good grade on this. All right, I have tentatively broke down this theoretical presentation into a, a five-speaker model. That said, you could obviously adapt these main points to any size group that you were doing this for. So let's go ahead and talk about the introduction. The introduction is very similar to what you did last time. You're going to start off with an attention getter, um, have some audience adaptation and a thesis statement. The only thing different about the thesis statement is whereas last time it was something along the lines of today we're here to inform you about this topic, this time it should be something along the lines of today we're here to persuade you to do blah inside of here. Um, then preview the main points where you got to choose the main points last time. This time they're already chosen for you. You're going to talk about the problems with a plan to solve, resistance to, and ways to enact the change and so forth. So their main points will already be set out. So let's go ahead and talk about those main points. The main points in this presentation, at least the first chunk of them, follow what we call the stock issues paradigm, which include talking about the harms that exist, the reasons why they exist, a plan to solve, and why that plan actually does solve inside of here. So start off with a harm. And this harm should be something bad that is happening right now in the world, ultimately because of what problem it is that you want to talk about. And so say, for example, we were going to give a presentation on why marijuana should be legalized. We might start off by talking about the harm associated with environmental degradation that's taking place throughout the northwestern United States as people are trying to grow marijuana inside the forest. And we can talk about the extent to which this environmental degradation is happening, who is affected by all these chemicals and things that are being poured into the streams, and what the consequences it um, are because of this, and of course, using facts and statistics to go ahead and support all of these claims that we we're making. If we we're going to do this again, we could say that perhaps prisons are overcrowded, and we could talk about how overcrowded they are, who's affected, and then the reason why we could say because people are being locked up uh, for being arrested for possession and distribution and other things related to marijuana. This leads us to the inherency, and the inherency is the argument for cause, the reason why these problems continue to exist. And in the case of marijuana being illegal, it has to do with the law, the fact that marijuana is labeled a Scheduled I narcotic underneath the United States federal law, and in addition to that, that we have treaty agreements that we've signed with uh, South American countries that says under no circumstances will we ever legalize marijuana. So that being said, that moves us on to the next point, 
for us to be able to solve any of the harms that we talked about, we need a plan that overcomes the speed bump, right? Overcomes the inherency and allows us to do something about the harms. And that's where the plan comes in. The plan is a policy change. These are policy change presentations. You can't just say we should have some awareness. Awareness is not going to cut it. If anyone comes up and just says we need more awareness, you are already failing this part of the presentation. Instead, think of a policy that you can change that might make these things better. So in the case of marijuana being illegal, let's go ahead and make it legal. Our plan, the United States federal government should enact a bill that will be signed by the president legalizing marijuana, reclassifying it as a recreational substance, and we're going to go say that that will be passed by Congress, signed by the president, it's going to be funded through normal means, <clears throat> we would hope that this uh, would pass as soon as possible, but it would probably take about a year for it really to have any effect. And shoots, let's go ahead and say the FDA is going to be the enforcement mechanism inside this. What I've done is laid it out a potential plan that is going to solve these things. We might need to add a writer on that to say we're going to renegotiate our treaties with South American countries so that uh, we're not being bound by those treaty laws. But nonetheless, we have a plan that could potentially solve the problem. That leads us to the next step. We actually have to explain and give sources and evidence that things would get better, right? So in the first part, we said that we had problems with environmental degradation. In a world where marijuana is legal, I suppose we could argue that people could just go ahead and grow this stuff up and down the Central Valley, assuming that there's some water. And as a result for that, we could use good, sustainable farming practices that aren't going to destroy the forest. Yay! Uh, harm too, we we're talking about overcrowded prisons. If we're not throwing people in jail for possession and distribution charges anymore for marijuana, less people in jail, more money, good thing, less people having lives destroyed, and all of that kind of stuff. So, at this point, we're about halfway through the presentation, and we have laid out a good stock issues argument that talks about the harms, the inherency, the plan, and the solvency. Now where things get interesting. There are always going to be naysayers to any controversial issue. That's why it's controversial. If there weren't naysayers, it probably wouldn't be an issue. Nonetheless, we need to deal with their arguments. In this part of the presentation, we need to look at the people that say our plan shouldn't happen, try to gain some insight into why they are arguing that that's the case and showing why they are wrong. Right, And this is the key point that people confuse. If you've got that one group member that doesn't like the group topic, is like, oh, great, I'll just argue against you during this part of the presentation, you are fundamentally misunderstanding the presentation itself. What the resistance part of the presentation is, is a chance for you to explain why other people are against your plan and why the arguments that they are making are flawed or just plain wrong, or at the end of the day, don't matter because the harms that you talked about outweigh any potential issues that they're talking about, right? You know, people say that if we were to legalize marijuana, that uh, it would take over our society and that it would be a gateway drug and the amounts of addiction to harder drugs would skyrocket. You know, based on that, we could provide some good sources and evidence that show that that's not true and that marijuana does not tend to function as a gateway drug or even if we want to say, fine, you know, there's right, there's some evidence to support that. It doesn't matter because even if everybody that uh, used it became an addict, it would still be better than the environmental degradation that is destroying ecosystems and the like. You know, ultimately it's up to you what angle you want to take with it, um, but I will uh, leave that to you and your group members. But make sure that you present their arguments and you present them strongly but then you re, uh, refute those arguments with your own evidence and stances. All right, so at this point, we've laid out an argument. We've talked about the naysayers. We've dealt with them. It's time for us to enact some persuasion and persuade our audience that something has to change. So right at this point, we need some clear things that the people in your room can and should be persuaded to do to make your plan a reality. So in my theoretical example, we tried to argue that Congress should pass a bill. One of the ways that we can call people to action is we can say, hey, write your congressperson, tell them to pass a bill that changes this law, that changes these things, or go on to we the people gov and sign this position. Now, here's an important point that often gets people in trouble. 
Do not speak in hypotheticals here. Your goal is to actually persuade people to take action. So if you just come in, you're like, well, you know, you could sign a petition or maybe like go to a protest or something like that, and that would be good. You are epically failing the implementation step. You need to call us to action. You need to tell us what you should do. It should be something that we can actually take and do something with. So like I've had students put QR codes and have people scan them with their cell phones, sign petitions right in class. Those are great ideas. I've had people actually bring petitions in. I've had people bring letters that they can sign and send to their congressperson. Like make this actually happen. Do not just do it theoretically because you will do very horribly on this section. All right, last is you so go ahead and sum this thing up, do the typical conclusion things such as reasserting and reinforcing the thesis, explain why you persuaded us and how you persuaded us, uh, summarize those main points, tie back to your audience, and go ahead and finish with a good stylized attention getter that leave us interested and wanting more. All right, this concludes the lecture. I highly encourage you, once again, to check out that online assignment guide. There are templates and examples and things that will help you get started inside of here. But as always, if you have questions, please do not hesitate to contact me at one of the variety of channels that are made available to you. Thanks, and have a fantastic day.